Blessings, 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 everyone. It's Dick and Antonio Spivey. I'm back with you guys. I miss you guys so much. I'm excited to share with you what God has been sharing with me in the spirit in this season. Once again, I am a part of the Mouth of God ministry, specifically a leader of the Christ Likeness in Action Kingdom Men's Group. Today, I want to share with you what God has been sharing with me in the spirit that today he just wants you to get started. Get started on that thing that he has been speaking to you about, that thing that you have been saying that you want to do for him, that you want to do for the kingdom, that you want to do to better your life, to better yourself. As a Christian, God is telling you that today is the day to go ahead and get started. God is recommissioning you to get started in this season. He has already spoke to you about this thing. He has already laid certain things out to you, already given you a vision of certain things that he wants you to do. So today is God giving you a reminder to just go ahead and get started. So when God was speaking to me about this, God began to show me that one of the things that is holding the men back in this season is a resistance to friction. God is saying that the men are fighting against friction and it's causing them to not want to move forward with things that God has already ordained for them to do. So as always, when God speaks to me about something, I always want to look a little deeper into what does it mean. When I start to hear that word friction, it's such a specific word, I started to dig a little deeper and see, well, what really does that word mean? What does friction mean? So when I looked up the definition of it, the definition of friction is the resistance between two things when they begin to meet in reciprocal movement, which means when you begin to push against something, there's something, a force that automatically begins to work against you. It's automatically friction that's going to be there when you start to move forward because of two things reciprocally moving on the same plane. As we make the decision to begin today, we must understand that according to tribology, the greatest friction is always at the beginning. So whenever we begin to purpose ourselves to make that decision to now I'm going to go, there is going to be some general pushback that is always going to be the hardest at the beginning. Gotha J.W., who is a German writer who is considered to be the German counterpoint to William Shakespeare, puts it like this. Everything is hard before it is easy. So of course, once God is speaking to me about this, I'm going to the scriptures I'm reading and God revealed this to me to go back to the beginning, go back to the foundational scripture of the Bible. So the foundational scripture of the Bible is of course, Genesis 1 and 1. Now it's even more important to understand that although Genesis 1 and 1 is the beginning of the Bible, it's not the first chronologically written book of the Bible. We all know that Job was written before it. So it's even more poignant to understand the importance of Genesis 1 and 1, which states, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Whenever I'm ministering to an unbeliever or I find myself in an apologetics debate with an atheist, one point of contention that can quickly arise is that the Bible is so fantastical, it has so many unbelievable stories, and they'll ask me questions like, how can you believe that a fish swallowed a man? Or how can you believe that Jesus turned water to wine? Or even, how did he feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish? And I always get them to understand that if you can believe in Genesis 1 and 1, then everything else becomes plausible. Everything else becomes plausible when you understand that if God created the heavens and the earth, then everything else is easy to him at that point. Not to say that the, that the creation itself was hard because we know we, he spoke things into existence that wasn't, but that would have been the one thing that makes everything else possible. You see, if we believe, according to our presupposition, that God created the heavens and the earth, then everything else makes sense. Of course, he can turn water into wine. Of course, he can make a chicken form before an egg because he is God. He created all of it. Nothing, nothing then becomes unnatural to him because it's all his creation. Now this particular time, as I'm studying Genesis 1 and 1, God brings to remembrance another time that he revealed something to me about this scripture. This was first revealed to me as I was listening to a sermon by the great John MacArthur. You see, around 1820, the famed non-Christian physicist Herbert Spencer declared that everything in reality and our known reality can be fit into five different categories consisting of time, force, action, space, and matter. Herbert Spencer outlines to his colleagues in the scientific community that everything that is susceptible to scientific examination 
falls into one of these five categories, again, which is time, force, action, space, and matter. Taking this information into account, when we go back to Genesis 1 and 1, something truly remarkable is revealed to us in Scripture. So now when we go back to Genesis 1 and 1, we see in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So now applying this scientific hermeneutic, we can see these five categories revealed to us in scripture. So first we see in the beginning, which is time. Then we see God, the force he created, which is action. The heavens, which is space. Now we know space is a dimension, but when it's speaking of space, it's not talking about the, the darkness and the expanse of space. It's thinking about spatial awareness, like spatial awareness space space like that and lastly the earth which is matter which is generally any physical substance this is very powerful when we begin to look at it in a practical standpoint of how can it affect our lives looking once again at time the time is now for us today is our in the beginning today is the in the beginning to the thing that god has purposed you to do the force is you we must remember that we are vessels of Elohim, the Almighty God. We must begin to understand that we are the only unstoppable force in our life and that there is no unmovable object. Jesus explained this clearly in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, when he said, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, then you can speak to that mountain and it will be moved. Nothing is impossible for you. Action. We must take action. We must not sit on our hands and not do anything we must take action to begin to see things manifest in our lives that god has intended for us to experience space god is saying in this season that we need to be into a space of faith get into that realm of faith so that god can begin to help you to uncover those things that is causing you to experience stagnation matter begin to make your dreams tangible add substance to those things that God has already revealed to you in your heart. God is saying right now, today is your day to get started. God is saying in a practical standpoint of Genesis 1 and 1, unless you begin, you are limiting the possibilities of your life. Unless you begin, the dreams that you have don't have any plausibility. God is calling you to move past that initial pushback of friction and live for him today. Once again, my CIA agents, I am Deacon Antonio Spivey. Shalom.